Hi, and welcome back. Wow, it's uh, day 29 of the challenge, and uh, I feel like we just started, and already the challenge is coming to an end. So um, one of the things that I want to impress upon you towards the end of the challenge um, is that whatever we're doing uh, balance-wise or adding on in the practice, we want to be able to maintain good posture while doing it. So you want to be able to maintain your Tadasana line. So it's just a reminder refresher. Now one of the great benefits of having Stacy here is that Stacy has such a beautiful practice. She's really able to maintain and find those Tadasana lines within the poses. So it's a great reference to be able to look and see. So we're going to start off with a Supta Tadasana today. And we're just going to try, I'm going to try to um, encourage you to come back to the Tadasana action. And when you feel that you can't find it, to just back off. So it's probably the most important lesson. One of the most common things that I see, so I've been, I've been teaching yoga for like 15 years now, um, and been, I teach yoga like in and out of gyms, whatever, and I can't tell you how many times I see people working out or doing yoga and loading themselves with poor posture. For example, like holding weights and like curling stuff and like hunched over and like shoulders rounded. And so the point is that we don't want to add re resistance or more strain onto something that's already in poor posture. So we want to start to work to open things up first and then start to add more difficulty to it. So for example, if you can't do a lunge yet without being hunched over, there's no reason you should try to step up into the warrior three. So uh, really important to like look at these poses in a mirror, have someone take pictures of you, see the five basic poses to make sure that you can do those well bef before you go and get excited about adding on to these advanced shapes. Okay, that's, that's the disclaimer. The good thing is, is that like, you'll open up your body energetically, you'll feel lighter, more energized. The negative thing, if you're more uh, motivated by fear, is that you're gonna injure yourself over time if you keep doing them like that and just encourage poor posture, tension, pain. Okay, so let's begin in Supta Baddha Konasana today. Lie down onto your back with the soles of your feet together and your knees wide apart. And just take a few moments here to drop in. So start by letting your body relax. Relax your feet and your legs, your hips, your abdomen. Let the shoulders and the chest open up. Relax the neck and the jaw. Relax the tongue. Then bring your knees together and stretch your legs out one at a time along the floor. Press out through your feet as if your feet were up against the wall. Reach to all four corners of your feet. Then roll from your inner thighs downward until all four corners of your knees are pointing straight up to the ceiling. Once you release the thighs downward like that, you might feel that the lower back arch gets exaggerated. If that happens, lengthen the tailbone, the tip of the tailbone towards the heels more so that the lower back gets long instead of arched up. Let the shoulders relax so the neck releases into its curve and its length. Then take your arms up. As you reach through the tail to the inner heels, hands as if they were holding a block, slowly start to reach your arms back. and then back up. Try not to let the rib cage move at all. Then slowly start to reach the arms back. And then back up. Keep the elbows straight, arms strong, neck long. Slowly start to reach the arms back. and back up. Now take the block in between your hands, 
Then squeeze in onto the block, feel the tricep muscles turn on, but keep the chest open and relaxed. And pressing the four, uh, your knuckles, what are these things called? Your knuckles into the block, slowly start to reach the block back. Pause halfway and make sure that the bottom rib ring hasn't jumped up to the ceiling. Soften the rib cage down and then let the arms slowly start to fall back. Now drive through the inner heels to the tail. Good. Then bring your arms back up. Then bring your right leg up into tabletop position. And slowly reach the arms back. Keep the lower back long, neck long. And back up. Change legs, maintaining the length in your spine. Stretch the right leg out, bring the left knee up as your arms reach back. Bring the arms back up as the leg stretches out simultaneously. And then bring the right knee up as the arms go back. Bring the block up as the leg goes out. Bring the knee up as the arms go back. Good, now keep the knee up, take the arms up. Bring the right knee up to meet the left. Good, then hug in with your legs like they're holding a skinny block in between them. And then as you inhale, take your arms back and your right leg forward. But keep the rib cage in, the low abs in, so that the lower back stays long. Is it kind of hard? <laughs> Come back up. <laughs> it's hard. And slowly change sides. If you get really good at this, you can add a, you can use a heavier block, like a wood block, come back up, or you can even use a weight. Slowly change sides. Sorry, I'm spitting on you. This is my laugh. <laughs> Drive through the tailbone, through the reach of the right inner heel. Back up. 20 more times. Change sides. And back up. Really good. Set your feet down. Move the block to the side. Let your arms open up to the side. Cactus style. Take the feet the width of your mat and let your knees swivel over to the right. Look to your left. Bring the knees back to center. And let the knees swivel over to the left as you look to the right. Come back to center. Good, then roll yourself up to seated. And stretch back into downward dog. So in your down dog, start to open up the soles of your feet, open up your toes. Then keeping the toes open, Slowly lower your knees down. And with the toes curled under still, stretch your hips back towards your heels. Then come back up onto your hands and your knees. Good, find your neutral lower back here. Open your chest and stretch your right leg back as you send your left arm forward. Change sides. Change sides. Then hold there and bring the elbow and the knee towards each other. Inhale, reach back out. Exhale, elbow, knee together. Inhale, reach back out. Exhale, elbow, knee together. Inhale, reach out. Then lower your hand and your knee. Change sides. Exhale, the elbow knee together. Inhale, reach out. Exhale, elbow knee together. Inhale, reach out. 
Exhale, elbow knee together. Inhale, reach out. Lower your hand and your knee down. Stretch back into down dog. Walk your feet forward to the front of your mat. Inhale, make a flat back, elongate your spine. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, come all the way up, raise your arms up. Exhale, the hands to your heart, Samasthiti. Inhale, raise your arms up. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, flat back. Step back into plank pose, one leg at a time. Open up your chest and your collarbones. Good, now maintaining the Tadasana alignment. So the same thing as when you're on your back. Roll the inner thighs up towards the ceiling. Lengthen your tailbone towards your heels. Feet like they're up against the wall. Feel the lower back as long as it can be. It's not rounded, but it's not drooping either. Feel the chest as open as it could be. Feel the neck long, the head isn't sagging in front of the spine at all. And then maintaining that, bring your right knee up to your chest. Try not to round. Change legs, bring the left knee up to the chest. Change legs, right knee up. Change legs, left knee up. Change legs, right knee up. Change legs, left knee up. Good, then stretch that leg back, lower down onto your belly. Stretch your arms all the way forward. Press the pinky finger side of the hand down and rotate the outer shoulders down. Then bend your elbows out to the side in cactus position. Lift the hands up off the mat and lift the head up. But think of making the neck as long as you can instead of doing, um, instead of coming into extension in your spine, just elongate like instead of doing a back bend. Then slide the arms forward again, turn the thumbs up, press the pinky finger side of the arm down, and rotate the outer shoulders, triceps down, get longer, then bend the elbows out to the side, open up your chest. One more time, send the arms forward, press the pinky finger side down, rotate, then bend the elbows out to the side, open up your chest. Put your hands next to your side ribs. Roll up into cobra. Roll your chest back down. Press up, hands and knees. Stretch back into down dog. Raise your right leg up from the inner thigh. Exhale, bring your knee to your outer right armpit. Inhale, back up. Exhale to the left pit. Inhale, back up. Exhale the knee to your chest. Pull your knee up high. Step your foot all the way up by your thumb and lower your back knee down. Inhale, raise your arms up, low lunge. Feel your right outer hip turn on and your right knee track straight ahead. Then bend your elbows out to the side, open up your chest. Inhale the arms back up. Bring your hands down to the mat. Curl the back toes and lift the back knee. Then lift from your belly and float your arms back behind you. So let's look for that mountain pose line again. From your back ankle all the way to your hip, to your shoulders, to your head. Head up just a little, Stacy. So like I could hold the broomstick from your heel all the way to your ear and there would be a straight line of energy. The chest is open. Good, then maintaining that line, set your left hand down and twist. So I think, like Stacy can do it for sure, I think I'd do it okay. Maybe, I don't know, I gotta look it back at the film. But we could put the hand down and still find that line of energy. But if you hunch over to get your hand down, then you need to slide a block underneath your hand like that to lift up in the line of the back ankle. But if you're flexible enough, you can 
drop the right thigh deeper so that this line still exists. Don't let the back thigh droop. Bring your right hand down, step back into plank pose. Open your chest. Good. Then with the block right underneath your hips, shift forward and lower down onto the block. Lower the chest to block height too. Hold there and find your mountain pose line again. Legs strong, press through the heels. Let the head be right in the line of the spine. Then lift back up into plank. Nice. Stretch back into down dog. Wow. Raise the left leg up from the inner thigh. Cool. Stay connected even into the hands and as you exhale, bring your knee to the outside of your left armpit. Inhale, reach back up. Exhale, knee to the outside of your right armpit. Inhale, reach back up. Exhale, knee to your chest. Pull your knee up high, lift. Step your foot all the way up by your thumb. Lower the back knee down. Inhale, raise your arms up. Exhale, bend the elbows out to the side, open up your chest. Inhale, the arms back up. Bring your hands to the mat. Curl your back toes under, lift your back knee. Good, back leg strong. Now lift up from your belly up towards your heart and float your arms back behind you. Feel this line from your back ankle through your spine. Then set the right hand down, block or floor, your call, and twist, take your left arm up. The deeper you twist, the more that your left hip will want to swing out to the side. So don't do that. Keep your left hip in as you're twisting because your body tries to avoid the stretch. It tries to go like the path of least resistance. Like, okay, this is easier. Just swing the hip out. Bring your hand back down. Step back into plank pose. Then with your block right underneath your pelvis on the medium height, Shift forward and lower slowly to elbow height. Good, now spread the collarbones. Legs strong. Lift straight back up into plank. And stretch back into dog. Walk your feet forward to the front of your mat. Inhale, make a flat back. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, come all the way up, raise your arms. Exhale, Samastiti. Inhale into chair pose, bend your knees, sit your hips back. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, flat back, elongate the spine. Step back into down dog. Inhale into plank pose. Open up your collarbones, then shift forward and lower slowly like you're gonna lower onto the block again. Inhale into upward facing dog. Roll the shoulders back, open up your chest. If it's too much on your lower back, just do cobra. Exhale into downward dog, stretch back. Step your right foot up by your right thumb. Set up your back heel for warrior one, then pause for a moment, let things settle. Let the back foot open up the big toe mound, the little toe mound in the center of the heel. Lengthen your tailbone through your back inner heel. Then lift up through the back inner arch all the way up into your belly, come up into warrior one. Raise your arms, look up and join the palms for a moment. Bring your hands back down to the mat, step back into plank pose, chest open, legs strong, Hold here or shift forward and lower slowly to elbow height. Inhale into upward facing dog. Exhale into downward dog. Step your left foot all the way up by your left thumb. Set up your back heel. 
Let the back foot ground. Lengthen the tail from the arch. Lift up from your belly and come up. Warrior one. Look up. Join your palm. Exhale. Hands to the mat. Step back. Plank pose. Now if you can maintain the Tadasana alignment and shift forward and lower to elbow height, then do it. But if you round and the shoulders collapse into the chest, upward facing dog, sorry to make you hold for so long, then it's not appropriate. Downward facing dog, stretch back. You're just doing the same thing. You're just loading the body in a way that's creating more pain, more tension. So we're trying to open up the energy centers in the body when we practice yoga. And we don't want to create undue strain, not uh, strain that's not necessary. And it just comes from just being aware and practicing uh, observing what's happening with your body instead of just moving from ego and thinking like, oh, like they're doing it. Or maybe just even ignorance. I'm not sure if I can do it or not. Look in between your hands. Step or float up to the front. Inhale, make a flat back. Elongate. Exhale, fold forward. Now let's just go through like a classic B. Modify if you need. Otherwise, we're going to move with the breath. Inhale into chair pose. Bend your knees and sit back. And exhale, stand. Hands to your side, Samasthiti. Inhale into chair pose. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, flat back. Step back and lower, Chaturanga. Pancha, inhale, up dog. Shot, exhale, down dog. Sapta, step your right foot. Inhale, reach up. Ashto, exhale. Nawa, inhale. Desha, exhale. Ekadesha, step your left. Inhale, reach up. Dwadasha, exhale. Triodasha, inhale. Chaturdasha, exhale. And hold for five breaths. One. Two. Three. Four, five, Panchadasha, bend your knees, step or jump and inhale. Ashto, exhale. Saptadasha, inhale into chair. Samasiddhi. Good, then turn to your right and take your legs wide apart. Spread your arms out. Turn the left leg in slightly, turn the right leg all the way out. Bend your right knee, warrior two. Extended side angle. Warrior two, inhale, come back up. Straighten your right leg, turn your feet to the other side, and reach out over your left leg for warrior two. Extended side angle, place your hand down, reach your right arm over. Now try to find that mountain pose line from your back ankle all the way out through your crown. 
If you're able to go a little bit lower on your prop and still find that line, that's fine. But if you hunch over like a wet noodle, Stacy, will you show what a wet noodle looks like? Yeah, then that's no good for your body. You don't want to be strengthening that and holding that shape. So you might even have to come up higher than a tall block. Sometimes people need to put their hand on like a stool or something or forearm to thigh to be able to get the opening of the chest and the length through the back leg. Come back up into warrior two. Then straighten your left leg, turn your left toes in so your feet are parallel. Clasp your hands behind your back, roll your shoulders back and open up your chest. Fold forward in between your legs, prosery to seat. Change the inner lock of the hands, take the other index finger on top. Then reach down through your feet, come back up to stand. Spread your arms out. Turn your legs to the right for triangle. So make sure that you're high enough up so that the chest is open and it feels like the whole spine can elongate. If you go too low, you'll turn into the wet noodle spine again. So don't do that. Feel the spinal muscles turn on. Now whatever prop that you're holding to elongate the spine, you're going to use that same prop as you step up into Ardha Chandrasan. Bend your knee, slide your hand a foot in front, and step up. Now raise the back heel until it feels like the back leg is up in line with the spine. Grow through your back heel, out through your crown. Then bend your right knee and slide back into warrior two. Straighten your right leg, turn the legs to the other side. Bend your left knee. Straighten your left leg and reach out for triangle. Then bend the left knee. Slide your prop a foot in front of your pinky toe and step up. Look for that line from your back ankle out through your spine. The same feeling you had on your back at the beginning of class. That should be the feeling. So look for that same Tadasana line. You should be able to feel just like on your back at the beginning through your right heel all the way through, out through your crown. Feel the inner thigh roll back and the tailbone get long. And stretch from your navel all the way up to your heart as you reach your heart forward. Then bend that knee and as smooth as you can slide back into warrior two. Then straighten your left leg. Step your back foot forward, mountain pose. Inhale, raise your arms up. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, make a flat back. Then squat down for crow pose.
work on your malasan. Oh dang, it's getting real now. Okay, work on your malasan. If it's difficult to squat, just practice malasan until that comes well. But if you have malasan down, then hook your knees and your arms and practice going in a crow. Chaturanga, step or float back. Good, then stretch back into down dog. Then set your left knee down onto the mat, open up into side plank with your left hand, left knee down. Imagine you're up against a wall right now. Find the Tadasana line from your back ankle through your spine. Then stretch your left leg out behind your right or just hold with the left knee down. If it's too much on your shoulder, if you feel that your posture is sacrificed, it'd be better to work with a knee down. Then slowly stretch back into down dog. Set your right knee down, open up, left arm up. Imagine your back up against the wall, lean the head back into alignment with the spine. Then stretch the right leg back behind the left without rounding over. Don't let the head move forward to the chest collapse. Keep the spread from the center of your chest all the way out into your shoulders, into your hands. Then slowly come into plank pose. Stretch back into down dog. Look in between your hands. Jump through to seated and come up into boat pose. Bring the knees up, arms forward. Then bend the knees and lower into Modified low boat. Tuck the abs in, knees right up over your hips. Keep the crunch like you're hugging your front ribs all the way down towards your front pockets and slowly send your right leg forward. Good, change sides. Change sides. Now keep the abs in, keep all that intensity. Raise your extended leg up halfway. And stretch the other leg out to meet it. Ooh, abs back in. Then come back up into boat pose. Put your hands a foot behind you. Plant your feet. Now open up your shoulders, open your chest. Grow the inner arms tall, and then if you can start to lift your hips up without the, in, without the chest sinking at all, go ahead and start to lift the hips. But if as soon as you lift the hips, you notice that the tension in your chest makes the shoulders sink in, the chest collapse, we better just keep the hips down and not lift them up all the way. Lower your butt down, bring your knees up. Lower slowly into Arda. Come back up in the boat. Good, then cross your legs, stretch back into down dog. Step your right foot for warrior one. Inhale, you raise your arms up. Then bring your hands behind your back, press your knuckles together in your upper back and straighten your right leg. Step your back foot slightly closer, open up your shoulders and your chest. Then start to lean yourself forward slowly, maybe halfway as long as you can keep the whole spine long. Like from your tail, 
all the way out through your crown, the broomstick feeling. Then navel the spine lengthen all the way out over your leg and let the whole back of the spine go forward and down evenly. Inhale, come back up into the flat back position. Then stretch your arms straight back behind you. If it's difficult to find the flat back and hold that, then just hold here. If you feel like you have it, you have the flat back, you have the length, then step up to balance on your right leg. Raise the back leg all the way up to hip height. Remember, we don't want to load the spine if you're hunched over. And without your foot touching the floor, come up to stand. Bring your knee up, raise your arms up. Stretch your legs straight out in front of you. Bend your right knee and wrap your left leg up and over. Cross your left elbow under. Uncross the arms and the legs, stand and bow. Inhale, raise your arms up. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale into a flat back. Step back to down dog or take a vinyasa. Step your left foot. Inhale, reach up, warrior one. Then bring your hands behind your back and straighten your left leg. Step your back foot slightly closer. Open up your chest and inhale. Exhale, start to tip forward. And lengthen all the way out over your leg. Then come back up into the flat back position. Stretch both arms straight back behind you. Open up your chest shoulders. Work there on holding the flat back or step up to balance into warrior three. Remember, if you feel that you're losing the flat back, we better just to hold in the lunge position. Work on finding it there. Then without your foot touching the floor, come up to stand, bring your knee up, arms up. Stretch the legs straight out in front of you. Then bend your knee, wrap your right leg up and over, and cross your right elbow under. Uncross your arms and your legs, stand in mountain. Inhale the arms up. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, flat back. Step right back into down dog. Inhale into plank pose. Lower down onto your belly. Clasp your hands behind your back. 
Lift your shoulders, head, chest up. Then press the tops of the feet down and lift the inner kneecaps up. So legs strong, tailbone lengthens to the heels, belly up, to, up towards your chest. Then hold here or bend your knees and reach back with your hands for your feet. Roll into Upward Facing Dog. Stretch back into Down Dog. Then come into Vajrasana. Lower the knees down, point the toes back and sit back on your heels. If it's too much to sit like this, you can just sit cross-legged, like if it bothers your knee or your ankle, twist to your right. Twist to your left. Come back to center and fold forward, hands back. Then lie down onto your back. Open your arms out to the side. Cross your right ankle over your left knee and slowly let your legs fall over to the left. Come back to center. Change the cross. And legs over to the right. Come back to center. Uncross your legs and stretch out for Shavasana. Let the feet open up, let the feet relax. Let go of the tension in your legs and in your hips. Let the abdomen relax. Let the chest muscles open and the shoulders open. Let go of any tension in your hands and your arms. Relax your jaw, your tongue. Let the soles of the feet open. Let the pelvic floor open. Soften the diaphragm and open the roof of the mouth. 
Feel the crown of the head open. And imagine as you relax completely that the breath could go all the way down towards your pelvis. Then gently bend your knees and roll over to your right side. Press yourself up to seated and bring your palms together. Namaste. All right, thank you. So um, thanks for sticking with us through this longer practice in the challenge. One of my aims is to be able to build you up to doing an hour of yoga each day. Now I realize not every day allows for that, but um, at least an hour of practice is important to be doing on a more regular basis. Um, so something to work up to. Thanks for watching today. Thank you, Stacy, and we'll see you tomorrow for the final day.